circling above. Oh, oh just like that. Yeah. Boom. Boom. That, that's <laughs> right the trend. Cloudy, Boom is the thing. Yeah. So what happened to Yurt? Why didn't we retire Yurt? Because it's because it's too it's too much. And and honestly, Boom came from doing monologues. Like we kind of dropped the Boom on uh, when the beat drops. Mm. So the Boom drops kind of kind of perfectly. And then also it's like instead of a snap, it's like. Boom, we're here. Boom, and right. that's usually what I say. Boom, we're here, and then we go off. All right, um, I, just, I really so appreciated the year. So, but it's and all it, good, and it we'll served go. its time. We did it, it for did. like a year. It did. So we're moving on, on to bigger, better things, right? So we're but on your own on. podcast. Yes, on your own podcast, you come up with your own. You fuck. I'm not going to use boomer year on my own. Okay. Use your own. Ch- let, let's just go right into that. <laughs> yeah, I guess go- so. We should probably explain a little bit of the absence of my so, presence so, on the other stuff, right? So let me let me do it, and then you're going to talk about what you do. Okay. So, and I'm going to give the whole backstory. Okay. So here's the deal. So the line- the linear the story of this of this podcast was Hearts and Minds Collective was supposed to be a health and wellness podcast because I was ball deep, balls deep in health and wellness. Mm-hmm. And that kind of, pi- that kind of pigeon held us. Um, but it was a good start. And that started with Benny as the engineer, Benny as the producer and the engineer um, and kind of support Jesse as Jesse, which Jesse is still Jesse. Um, and then I said, let's start another podcast. And we started it doing it in Benny's house and that was Benny was again the engineer and kind of my support. Um, and really, if I, I'm so grateful to Benny because the only reason that I can do a podcast today on my own is because he supported me and like had my training wheels. Anyway, fast forwarding, fast forwarding to the beginning of quarantine. Benny had his relapse, which I don't give a fuck if we're not. That's what happened. Mm-hmm. So Benny had his relapse, and he kind of had to fall back on the responsibilities of the podcast. So I took on the responsibilities and that, be, that started with the quarantine episodes. I think it was quarantine one through like 15. Um, and then all the guests that we did, I was doing those on my own. Then we started doing a, a few squad casts via Zencaster. Um, I was cutting all the clips. I was doing all the back end stuff which I like doing, honestly, and let me give Benny props. If it wasn't for Benny, I wouldn't have the confidence to do any of that. So we needed Benny. I needed Benny. I still need Benny. First of all, Benny's my best friend. Let's preface. Let's say that first. <laughs> whether we do a, whether we do a podcast together, me and Benny talk every day about life, about our about our old ladies, about everything. So be and you know Benny and I are still hella close. But what was happening for me? I am I am the captain of a ship. I have worked by myself and had, when I have a goal, I just go full steam ahead and I have a vision for things and if things aren't going along with that vision, I'm like let's fucking change it. Me and uh with the mo- with the addition of the monologues and and the the momentum with the guests, I I put Benny in a position to do his own thing with Jesse. And it wasn't going smoothly. Things were not going smoothly. I started building resentment. I had resentment. I had resentment from a year ago from Benny not taking his recovery seriously. I had resentment towards Benny for not, for not, um, for bailing on the podcast because he wasn't feeling well. And then I had resentment, um, towards Benny for the way he was showing up on the podcast. So this finally came to a head um, with with one big argument. I did some step work on it. I made amends to Benny and we finally came to the agreement. They said like, hey, we're best friends. We're best friends. I don't want to sacrifice our friendship for a podcast. Um, Especially for me, like I'm... The podcast is running and going smooth. Mm-hmm. The podcast is going. So and and again, 
let me throw it back. Shout out to Benny, because the only reason the podcast is able to exist is because Benny did all the the behind-the-scenes work. I only started listening to the podcast six months ago. Before six months ago, I have not heard one podcast I did. I probably said awful things. Anyway. (laughs) So here we are today. Here we are today, where Benny is now kind of the guest right now, and we're going to talk about what Benny's working on, some of the fears he's experiencing, and some of the dreams and ambitions. And I'll finish with this lastly. You know, when you have a dream, when you have a dream, a good leader, which I'm trying to be a good leader, gets other people excited about their dream, and they want to fulfill roles within that dream. But when you're not getting paid, and you're actually paying money, It's hard to keep people invested in your dream when it's not, you know, if I, if, if I was making a million dollars and Benny was getting paid $400,000, you know, then it's easy to be like, okay, I'm, I'm being compensated. But really what I'm asking him and Jesse to do is let me run the show and also pay money to run the show. So that's a lot to ask people for. So the resolution that we came up with, it was now, and we're going to go into I I said, Benny, I want you to find your own dream, find your own niche, and I will do everything I can besides micromanage to support you in your dream. Boom. So now, Benny, tell people what you're working on. So I I guess just to preface a little bit of how this was born, um, which you did also. So I... And with with that year that you were frustrated with me with because of my recovery, because honestly, I really wasn't working a program. I was just kind of doing this shit out on my own. And I thought it was just a big ego thing, right? I was just not willing to surrender like my life to a full, full um, life of recovery, which now like I know exactly what that means. <laughs> and, and, I, and so the amount of work that I've done now is sort of a catalyst to what has come to here because like we get this opportunity to discover ourselves, right? We get this wonderful opportunity to kind of grow into the people that we want to become. We don't like, we're not necessarily slaves to all of our past and held down by all of that. We get to like move on to another chapter and move into something that we want to become. So as we're doing all these other squad casts and stuff like here in the studio and doing with current events, doing all these things, it just, with the person that I was becoming, I don't think it really aligned with myself because I don't think I have the bandwidth to continue to have conversations about Trump, uh, politics, uh, any other current events. Like it's really difficult. It takes a lot out of you. It's like, you have to wake up and get, be ready to go to war every day. And I don't have that within myself. So as Eric and I were sort of talking about like these things and, and our direction with the podcast and our relationship, which at the end of the day, just like Eric, you mentioned, our relationship is the most important thing. I would much rather lose a podcast and lose my best friend. And that's just, that's just what we learn, how we grow into ourselves. Like the external things, uh, only get us so far, but relationships are some of the most important things that we want to continue to, uh, cultivate and continue to hold on to. And especially because you, our families are integrated with each other. Right. And so now we're going to lose this beautiful thing that we've built up over like what, Eric, almost three years now. Right. Yeah. And so, so as Eric and I were talking and I had this, and we had this idea in a meeting, um, in the meeting, probably like a month before, before this sort of happened about this idea that I had called Barrio Corner and, you know, room and board recording studios here that, that we do all of this out of. So shout out to them who have like really been a huge support and yeah. the production to them has, has been above anything else that I could have expected. Room and board. Room really, board let, let, let me go in. Let me go into that really yeah. quick. Over the past six months, the quality and production of our podcast, and now not only our podcast, but our, I'm shooting commercials via room and board. I have other content creation. They're essentially becoming a content creation hub for me and for the Big Mood TV kind of movement um, and project. So shout out to them because when I look at other people's podcasts, we are leaps and bounds ahead of the game 100%. where people are asked people are asking me like what are you guys doing and that is 
all room and board yeah. productions with um uh, recordings we are just it's we are just coming here to we're just showing up yeah we're just showing up so um shout out to room and board for for doing doing what they do absolutely man so without them right a lot of this stuff wouldn't be possible so as we were sitting in a, in a like a pre-show meeting um we were sort of bouncing ideas around and and this thing called barrio corner popped into my mind and which is essentially like what we're here to talk about in a sense so uh, barrio corner is something that like we wanted to create especially here in san diego san so barrio corner is essentially a show it's uh this time it's going to be mostly based on on like on the youtube platform on the big mood tv platform and it's going to have like performances two to three song sets and then we sit down afterwards to have like a podcast style interview and you know we have our our first one dropping here in about two weeks we're going to drop it with uh with jericho black and k sounds that duo makes up sounds familiar we have a few other really cool people scheduled out ready uh ready to come in and so that's where this thing was born eric like once we made the decision like we're going to put our relationship in as a priority then eric came and said to me he's like hey hey Okay, so we moved on from this, but I don't want you to let go of that thing that you had because that not only was that an awesome idea, like that is something that I would absolutely love to do because I can only talk about current events for so long, but I could talk about music the rest of my life. I Music has been involved in my life since I was, I don't know, man, eight years old, right? I remember hearing um, Santana's Europa and that song, the moment I heard that song, changed the course of my entire life because without that i wouldn't have picked up a guitar without that i wouldn't have gone uh so deep into music i wouldn't have collected all the stuff that i've collected you know i, I shortly i got a uh you know those like radio tape deck recorders where you can make mixtapes and stuff i was doing that in third grade right i would sit next to the radio and then hit record you know shaggy it wasn't me came on and i remember hitting record like super excited and then if the dj talked over the outro i'd be super pissed like you know those things so music has been such a giant part of my life in fact it's probably been the biggest part of my life and so i wanted to create something here in san diego um, that would feature music right san diego artists san diego um and we're gonna like sort of expand this thing into plenty of other things Aside from just music, you know, we have like poets that we have in mind that we want to bring on, you know, we have writers, some, you know, a variety of things that feature San Diego's artwork. Um, so right now we're starting with music, you know, and it's something I'm super excited about. And, you know, it's, it's, um, and just like you're kind of saying with the nose, with the fears, like there's a lot of fear coming into this, dude. I'm not going to lie. Cause like <sighs> you're doing this on your own. Right. I'm, I'm taking this project on on my own and sending out emails. I'm, you know, sending out messages, DMs and and you're hearing getting a no response is, is to me worse than hearing a no, you know, because like at least saying no to me gives me a reason like, OK, then I can move on and close that and, and uh, focus on something else. But getting a no response, man, those are those are tough. And removing removing your personal feelings out of these things are kind of hard too because like this is something that i care about and this is something that i also want to like feature with everybody else with you with room and board like every i want everybody to benefit from something like this and so it's hard man you know it's it, it there's certain aspects of this that are scary because like there's some anxiety that sometimes gets in the way of like sending a message and it's easier to sort of be like, oh, shit, no, you know what? I got to clean up the house and then like disregard sending a DM to somebody to try to get them to come on to a show. You know, there's there's yeah, man, there's there's some difficult things that that um, goes on into doing this. But like at the end of the day, man, like, you know, you hear some silly stuff like, well, what's the worst they can say? No. Right. <laughs> and. That's just something that's been repeating in my mind. It's like, you know what, dude? If they're going to say no or no response, like at least I'm doing my part to try to grow this thing. And eventually something will stick. And so eventually some things have stuck, dude. And so, you know, we have we have some cool we have some cool people coming on. And um, but, you know, I'm not going to lie, man. Taking on a project like this by yourself, um, 
and it's not necessarily by myself either, but like, you know, heading a project like this can be, can be pretty, um, taxing, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, um, it is challenging. It is challenging to hear no. And I just talked about this, um, on the podcast that released on Tuesday. Um, Dave Chappelle talked about a brittle spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, if no, if no, um, if discouragement stops you from your dream, then your dream's not big enough. And that's a question that not only you, but I propose to anyone that I propose to anyone who wants to make a move in their life, whether it be to go on your own in business, whether it be in a breakup, whether it be any, any move that's big, um, you know, it's, it's, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage and how badly do you hear that shit? And that's like, that's motivation one-on-one. How badly do you want mm-hmm. it? Right. Yeah. Um, but, but it's an app, but th- those, that kind of saying is an absolute truth. When you want to like, for me, when it comes to this podcast, I don't give a fuck if anyone listens. I not even like, let me say this. It, I give a fuck 2%, 2% every once in a while. I'll say, fuck, no, like, not, you know, I wonder how many people are listening. But the rest of the time, I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I'm doing what the fuck I want to do. And that's how, that's how things have to be when you're creating your own project yeah. and for you, for you, that's a question that you have to ask yourself. I tell people this in recovery, go home at night. And this is goes to everybody go home at night before you go to bed and ask yourself earnestly, is this what I want to do? Ask yourself like deep down and don't just, cause if you say, On the surface, like when I ask people if they want to be sober, I say, hey, do you want to be sober? Are you ready to do anything it takes to be sober? Guess what they always say? They always say yes. They always say yes. Every time. Every every time they're like, yes, I want to be sober. But But when you're chasing your dreams, when you're chasing your dreams, when you're making drastic life decisions, that needs to be in your ball sack. It needs to be (laughs) or in your, in your, you know. Uterus female sac. reproductive part yeah. uterus y- your sac. uterus sac yeah. it needs to be in your uterus sac. it needs to be from the bottoms of your feet to the top of your head it needs to be in your heart that that's what you want to do otherwise it doesn't fucking work because unless you're some of those people like if you instagram is very tricky tiktok instagram twitch you know those things are very t- tricky because you can get popping very quickly if you're if you have a big fat ass, you can get popping very quickly. Mm. Whether you have, or even if you're just very pretty, you can get popping Dude, very fast. I mean, girls are popping for just reg- being regular, just being regular. So 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 that it's it's tricky. It's a mind fuck. It makes you believe like there's comp- that comparative mind. That's one of my character defects. Mm. Why are they Why are they finding success and I'm not finding yeah. success? Um, but you can't. Joe Rogan says that's a waste of thought. That's a waste of energy. Yeah. That is an absolute waste of energy. Why them, not me? Fuck all that. So if it oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you finish it out. No, no, no. Go, no, go ahead. Go right. ahead. So, I was ranting. What so where I'm coming from with this thing, right? And I guess to sort of circumvent some of the Gary V rantings and whatever, right? <laughs> is I want to help bands. We're paying I'm paying for for them to come in essentially so that they have a tool to further their, uh, to feature themselves. This is a full professional production, right? You get audio that'll get mixed by some of the top guys in the industry who I think, and I've been around a few and these guys here are the, some of the top engineers and in, in that I could find in San Diego and audio and visual right so you come in you have a two to three song set recorded and then also given to you and then you have some another way to feature yourself with video here of recording your set and then all i ask you know we come on we do a podcast we get to hear your story hear who you are what makes up this band what does what 
this all this entails that makes you guys driving forward. We talk about music. We talk about essentially what we're talking about here. Some of the fears, some of the regular stuff, the behind the scenes that goes on behind music, right? And then all I ask is that you plug the YouTube page for for a while, and then I can turn all of this stuff over to you, right? So I I love San Diego. I love the music scene in San Diego. So I'm like coming from a position that I want to help bands also, you know? So it's not so much that I am looking to uh, raise myself up is I want to give these bands a platform and a, and a hub to come to where they can use this as a tool for themselves. So that's really like a big driving force for me. Cause like, is it cool to have, you know, is it going to be cool to have build a successful show? Yes. But what really drives me for what really keeps that drive is that I want to help bands and whoever that is, dude. And we're not discriminating here. You know, then rap. if then if if that is if that is your intention, if your intention is pure, then just follow the course, man. Yeah. Just follow the course. Take the nose. Take the nose. There's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be haters. My brother told me that the other day. He's like, yo, there's always actually, you know, he didn't say this, but there's going to be and and I'm going to cut this clip right here. There's motherfuckers watching. There's motherfuckers watching me right now. There's motherfuckers watching this clip right clip right now. Well said. Who are fucking na- who are, who are naysayers until I pop off. Until we mm. pop off. Then they're going to be like, oh, I knew about ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Yo, here's the, Fuck here's, out of here. Here's the crazy thing, right? Every single one of my homies, and maybe that's just because that's, that's just the way I am. But every single one of my homies who wants to do something, I support them unconditionally, dude. Because I want – Some people are pe- like that. Yeah. Some, pe- some people are like that. I'm like that too. I, I'm really like that too. Like when, when pe- – because people tell me all the time, I started the podcast. I'm doing the podcast. Like I'm I, ha- asking me like how do I do the podcast? And I've helped – I've probably helped or given advice to – 10 or 15 people about starting a podcast. And that is just my nature is to be like, if I'm doing it and if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. But when it comes to like show and love, some people, a lot of people aren't like that. A lot of people that that's just because it's a feast or famine kind of thing. Oh, why does he get to do that? And I don't get or who the fuck does he think he is? Or what? Why does he think that what he thinks matters? Oh, why can't he get success? Why can't I get get it like him? Mm-hmm. Why can't? That, that, that? And you know what? Those motherfuckers are wasting their energy. Mm. They're wasting their time. You know, they're I, wasting their time. I find it really interesting, right? <clears throat> you would expect so. Starting this, like we started this, just when we started it, right? We didn't know much. Everything we figured out on the go. Everything I did as far like, you know, getting this thing going, um, all the the back end stuff. This is all stuff I had like researched on my own and, and figured it out. One thing I wasn't expecting was this like lack of support from friends. You know, like that was such a tough pill to swallow that the people your, who support your friends, you, yeah, but the people your who support friends you are the last people. Isn't that kind of crazy, dude? Like the people who support yeah. you are random people that end up following you, but your homies are the last ones to jump on the train. The, the people who know you are the last people because, because a lot of times, and th- you know what, man, I'm very, I'm very, uh, selective about who I call my friends for real Mm -hmm. because I I have I have five people in my life who I'm gonna know till I'm an old man I have and I'm very lucky to have those people um but there's a lot of people who know you who follow you on social even people in your family I've asked my I've asked my mom have you listened to the podcast my mom doesn't even listen to the podcast (laughs) she she shouldn't she shouldn't (laughs) Definitely don't listen, mom. But like the people close to you, they don't think they don't believe, especially in the spaces that we're in, in the space that I'm in. I'm in a very new in. I'm, this is a fairly new industry, even though Joe Rogan's been podcasting for 10 years. 
this is a fairly new industry, lucrative new industry. And it and it's not a stereotype, it's not a typical career path. So, but there's a lot of people who just the people closest to you are not gonna listen. And you but do you know what? Do you know what I get? Hmm. I get a lot, I get a lot of love, low-key love where people are like, yo, I someone texted me and said, I am endlessly impressed with the messages that you provide. I had another person say, Eric, you are the best. Mm. You provide such a, a, a nuanced and quality insight that I have that I haven't heard before. I have I had someone else say to me, Eric, when you get going, when you start talking and in are in your flow, it's like you're speaking poetry. I have people who tell me shit like that, but do people like it and share it? Mm. Nah. <laughs> no. No, they don't. No, they don't. Yeah. Because but but that's but that's just how people are. That's just how people are. So I, 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 I some like two percent of the time I take that personal. But fuck, fuck out of here. I love what I do. Yeah. Yet two podcast two podcasts ago, I had a full blown anxiety attack to the point where I was like, the only option is like my doctor had to give me sedatives. Hmm. My doctor had to sedate me yeah, because I, I was I, so. I called. I called you that day, and you were ready to go to bed. It sounded like. Yeah. It's ready to go to bed. Yeah, you just yeah. you just sounded my, worn out, is what it sounded. Yeah, like. my, my my doctor sedated me because I was so crippled with anxiety, and and I still did the podcast anyway. And at the end of the podcast, I had zero anxiety. It picked yeah. up after, but but I love what the fuck I do. So I want to call it back to a little bit of like. <clears throat> those comments that you're getting from people because like I don't want people to think that like you're sort of jacking yourself off and like trying to come on your face like what those are not even a little no, no, bit I know so what those are like so people understand is like those are little snippets of like thank you I can keep going I can keep just keep going this thing. yeah just let's keep, keep going. it going just keep going yeah dude what you know do you know what someone said to me yesterday someone said to me yo listen how crazy this is someone said to me I was listening to a Ram Dass podcast earlier in the morning, just working through some stuff. I just needed some inspiration. And then I turned on your podcast in the evening and it just affirmed what I was thinking all day. This motherfucker put me in the same sentence as Ram Dass. <laughs> yo, yo, that's, yo. Yeah, you're basically the, the, Ram Dass, homie. I'm basically, I'm basically, basically black Ram Dass. <laughs> But he, someone, so, you know what else someone did? Someone else called me a thought leader. Oh shit! I'm about to, I'm, I'm about to flip this motherfucking table. Damn, dude. So we got a, a black Mount Rushmore, dude. We got Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we got Eric, and who else would you put up on your Mount Rushmore then? Uh, Obama got to go up. Uh, Obama. All right, let's put Obama. So those four next Mount Rush. We're going to replace the, the current Mount Rushmore with those four right there. So. There you go. I'm um, going up. So. Yeah, so it's interesting, man. It's interesting that people love it, and and you, it's funny that like I don't I don't know. Maybe it's just that people want to take snippets of stuff and don't want to commit to like an, a thing. Because like you'll get, I'll get a lot more traction on Instagram with like putting stuff up in my stories or whatever. And I just, I first of yeah, all, that, I hate this fucking social media game, dude. It's so whack. I, you know, I hate the game. I hate the game. But do you know what I'm realizing? More people, more people learn about the podcast not even learn essentially listen to the podcast via instagram than they do downloads yeah. not more people but but people are like people will be like oh i i heard you talk about x y and z in the story some people download there's like a good amount of people who download but a lot of people will just be like yo what you said in the story is fire what you you know blah 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 so so the in, the Instagram game is weird, man. Like all of it is weird. And do I when I get into my restless, irritable discontentment, I I don't know if discontentment is a word, and I've said it a lot. Um, but when I get in that space, I start thinking, I start getting frustrated with 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 Instagram because it's it it's a game, it's yeah. a game, it's a game that I'm not particularly good at playing. Yeah, it's hard, right? Because, like, 
I've said it a bunch of times. It's like we're doing this thing for a virtual world, right? All of this exists strictly through our phones and our computers. That's the only medium that this exists on. And when it's off, it's off. Right, you put your phone, you put your phone down, you close your phone, or you close your laptop. Like that, vir- the portal to this virtual world is closed. And we're, and sometimes I feel like I'm doing so much just for this, um, uh, this virtual portal. And it's a hard thing to sort of like align myself with, right? Because like, I think like as myself, I've grown to live like appreciate the things that are so that are here in front of me, the relationships, the the things I'm able to do, like how I feel, like all of these tangible things. And so it's like I'm putting all this effort into this portal, dude, that like, yo, it can get turned off. It's, it's, I, it's, it's a weird, weird, weird thing that we're living in, man. Like weird thing. I'm very grateful. Yeah. I'm very grateful that I am authentic everywhere. And you know me. Yeah. You 100%. know me. I am. I, the way I talk on this podcast or the things that I say on the podcast are things that I think the things that I say in 12 step meetings are things that I think the things that I say in all those places are things that I tell my partner or I talk about in therapy. Of course, I say ratchet shit when I'm with my friends. That's what the of homies course, are for. That's what the, that's homies, what the homies, are homies are for, to be a little bit, a ra- little bit racist. Touch. No, but like, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I, but I get, but I get to say, I, I get to be free. So, th- so that's one thing I'm thankful about when it comes to social media. I'm not pretending to be anybody else. Mm. I I just get to talk like my speak like myself. Yeah. Well, I mean, to speak to that, yo, you're very on. You're authentically consistent in all and everything. Like this is this is who you actually are. It's not like you put this on, right? Like I don't. Which is which I can understand if people think that's a little bit different. But you know, like. Yo, you, everything dovetails together in your life. This is who Eric is. This is actually Eric. The Eric that I talked to on the phone, this conversation that we're having right now, like this is a normal conversation that we have on the phone too. Like this is just how we yeah. actually are. But yeah, man, I mean, one of the things that like I admire the most is like this constant drive to just be better, which is which is tough to keep doing. Because, like, we reach a level of comfort. And, you know, especially now, I think it's super important. But, like, it's something that I've, that you've sort of led me in a way to do also. Cause you're also an example to me of, like, you know, when I, when I went through all that shit, like, almost six months ago and stuff, like, you, you were actually a huge example to me of, like, what can be done. Cause I was like, yo, if this crazy motherfucker, uh, was able to get himself out of all of this through all of this other stuff too, like, who's to say that I can't also? Right, you know what I mean. So I'm the god, I'm the goddamn Terminator, bro. <laughs> Nothing is gonna. Kill me. It's weird, dude. I have, F, it, you know, my uh, someone in my family found out that I was like molested and groomed as a kid, and it was just like, damn, how do you? I've made it through ev- almost every hardship that you can make it through. Yeah, every every bad thing that can happen has happened, and it's it's honestly made me better. And it's all provided insight into into ch- challenging and facing adversity. A lot of the adversity that I've dealt with in my life, I've created as well. So I, <laughs> yeah, you've been so on, I, you've been on a tear about talking about amends and stuff lately this week, man. I've been seeing all of that. Yeah, um, man. Because you know how good it feels to just fucking make things right. Yeah. And I, I was I was talking to my mom about it, and you you've heard me say this. The things that I say on this podcast and the things that I do in life are essentially me yelling, hey, world, please forgive me. (laughs) That's that's essentially what I'm doing is just is just hoping that I put enough positive energy that I'll have peace and I can forgive myself for all the fucked up shit. So, yo, at at what point are you going to try to, like, move into that, though? Like, I, I think just, I, I honestly, asked you a question like, yo, like, do you think you're almost being too hard on yourself on trying to write all of these things that you're sort of keeping yourself down without like finding a little bit of freedom and, and knowing, because like the person you are now, even the person that I met two or three years ago when you were, you know, you were still like really manic and, and didn't do the amount of work that you're doing now. Like the, that person that I met when we first met each other through our 12 step stuff, I is 
unrecognizable to who you are now. So is oh, there thanks. is there like is there a place where like where you're just gonna be able to just say, you know what? Let me try. Let me try you know to what? just move into So there's a there's a there's a few answers. The um this psychological answers. I talked to my therapist on Monday and I said, I'm ready to heal from this. And she said, are you ready to talk about all of it? And that means I'm going to have to do essentially a fifth step mm -hmm. and share all the fucked up shit that I did. Yeah, I'm going to have to share all that out loud and then begin that work. So, so some of there's that level of it. There's the Christian school of thought that if you turn your life over to, and I'm going to, remove it from the Christian ideology. If I turn my life over to a spiritual life, then I'm almost absolved of all of my mistakes. Right. Well, I am. I am. As far as that school of thought, you're, there's an understanding of forgiveness, but you're also there's If consequences do show up, you can't escape those. Yeah. So, so I, and so the emotional, like, because, and I'm going to be very honest right now. I am one of those, I'm tortured by this stuff. Yeah. I really am. Like I, I, and I'll share this, the day that I um, had that anxiety attack and, and had to be sedated and all that stuff, I was up since two in the morning, um, two or three in the morning, commiserating, ruminating, obsessing about the life that I lived in the past. I am, mm. and I'm truly tortured by it. I, I wake up in the middle of the night like having nightmares about the life that I lived. Um, so it, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I live the karmic consequences. It's, I tell people, yeah. it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm living my best life over here, getting away with something. I'm, I'm tortured by it. Um, and I don't know, I don't know when it's, when it's going to be let go, but I'm, I'm gonna, that's why I meditate. To, to quiet those those voices down that tell me all the terrible things. That's why I podcast because it's it's a sense of a journal. It's a sense of a purpose. That's why I coach people. There's a sense of purpose. Uh, that's why I go to therapy. That's why I, I work so hard with my kids and love my kids so deeply and really try to play a strong role in their lives. Hopefully to, to, to do a living amends yeah. And you know what I've said on the podcast, maybe it's time to move on, but I just don't know what moving on looks like. You know, that's tough. I, I, I don't know what it looks like either, but like, at least I, as far as karmic consequences, like, you know, I, I do believe there, there could be some, but I, I, I think there are also some that we sort of bring on in our own because like, there's sort of this sense of like, that's what we know just to keep beating myself up over these, over these things. Um, cause it's almost like, like shedding some of my traumatic shit in the past. There's like a comfort. Cause it's like, who am I going to be without this identity of all of these traumatic things that I had in my past? Like, who am I going to be without that? And there's also like a responsibility in maintaining that and stuff. But, um, I think what really needs to be spoken to though, is like all of this work that we do just to appear regular in our lives right like you could like, you imagine me if without the work that i did i'd be homeless shitting in my pants fuck, you'd be homeless shit spraying on a fence somewhere I, and having yeah i'd have you know, i'd have you know but that's the yeah. thing that, that's the thing that we have to do right just so, so and i think like i don't know maybe people don't know or they do know or i don't know dude because like i so here's what it looks like to me, dude, it's like, or what it looks like to us, I should say, is like, we wake up, I got to take my meds first thing. If I don't, my day might be fucked, right? And then obviously, it the would prayer, definitely be fucked. yeah, so the prayer, then the meditation, the meetings, uh, the step work that we do, uh, and then like reaching out to other people, right? Being courteous to everybody, like making this conscious every moment effort almost to be opposite of what our natural instinct is to be just just to appear normal and if we don't do those things yeah. like our consequences are so much greater right i was telling my psychiatrist to be honest with you it's a bit exhausting oh it's a hundred percent exhausting i gotta go pick up my I, meds I, today and i don't want to drive to point loma 
it, you know, um, I, a big reason I was having the experience of, and I'm being way too honest today, but Dude, it's fine. Send the it. big reason, the big reason I was having the issue that I that I had um, on Sunday and Monday was because I forgot to pick up a life a life altering medication, and I had a few spare one. I was taking like half doses. And then by Sunday, I didn't take the dose. And by Monday, I was in full withdrawal. And and when I tell you, like, when I say it's exhausting, every I see I when it comes to when I talk about free health care, the reason I talk about wanting free health care is because there's people like me who are in the doctor's office two or three times a month. Hmm. I. I was in, I, I saw my doctor on Monday and I will see him again next week and I will see him again the following week. I see a therapist three three days a week. No, three months three three times a month. And it, when I say it gets exhausting, it gets exhausting that your brain is trying to kill you. Yeah. And I'm doing I'm doing everything I possibly can. Every when and when when I say everything. 12 step meditation sensory deprivation acupuncture massage medication you know you know uh reading personal development books you know exercise diet everything you possibly can do to stay well yo but, but that's the thing that sort of adds this like where you can hear that there's a different perspective on stuff because yo there's a lot of repeat repeating of buzz words that we hear dude but yo, you think like it's almost like like playing the blues, right, dude? You can only play the blues if you go if you like earn your right, dude. And like this is sort of this is kind of what comes with the context because it brings us back full circle to like why you're able to do what you do is because you've gone through all of this. You've put every ounce of energy and every ounce of effort that you have to become normal so that you can speak about these things and learn from what has come through that. There's things that like, yeah, man. yo, the toughest shit that I've gone through and made it out the other side. And like, yo, to be honest, dude, like, to be honest, there were times when I had no other option but to get out, dude. There, there was no other option. Like when I got my brain zapped from that relapse, yo, like what was I going to do, dude? I'm too much of a bitch to kill myself. I was like outside of reality in a psychosis, dude. I had a full mental breakdown, but like I had no other option but to just get through this, dude. And like... I remember breaking down on my couch in front of you, dude, being like, yo, I am in it, in the deepest part of in it. And even though I couldn't necessarily believe it, but like, I knew that I was going to come out on, on the other side of this. I had no other option but to get through it and to get through this in the correct way. But it feels like the world is going yes, to Yes, dude. But when I came out of that is the shit that I absolutely learned the most out of. And that shit only comes only comes through experience so the stuff that we talk about the stuff that we almost proselytize so much here and, and it sounds you know all of this other bullshit is because we've gone through it dude you know like yeah. you think i want to be in a psych ward again you think i want to start my life over you think i want to put this strain on my wife you think i want to no but at the same time dude the beautiful growth process that comes through this dude is is a beautiful opportunity that like dude. I is fucking undeniable, right? And so the person that is on this microphone speaking to you, and you've seen this transformation, I guess, whatever to use a buzzword, uh, use something different, is like a different person than who you met two years ago, right? Definitely. Definitely. And that's and that and we'll finish with this because I got I my uh oldest son, his dad's coming to pick oh, for pick sure. him up. Hey, so tell us what's um, up, Isaiah. Tell Isaiah what's, so, what's up, dog? What's um up? you know the beautiful thing about the life that I get to live and that you get to live and the stories that are told on this podcast, the story that was told right before we recorded this one, we get to see fucking miracles. So to me, to me, this is every day. I get to watch people go from homeless in Tijuana mm -hmm. to beautiful women today. Mm -hmm. I get to watch prostitutes. I get to watch people who were who were in incestual cults. I get to watch people who have lost their children uh, to CPS gain their families back and their children live thriving lives. 
my relationship gone from from me as a cheating a cheating man an abuse an abusive cheating man emotionally abusive cheating man to a father i am today we get to live it mm-hmm. we get to live it i get to see people come out of prison and raise their daughters so so to me wh- wh- when i'm talking when i'm talking about personal development motherfucker we're in the hope business son. <laughs> <laughs> what, this, this, that, that's all I'm like. We're in the hope business, and so if 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 we talk about what this podcast is about, obviously I talk about aliens. Obviously I talk about fitness and nutrition, but really this podcast is the hope business. Yeah, and 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 just just per, you know we're growing out here. We're and I said it. I say it all the time. We're healing out loud. Mm-hmm. That's what we're doing here. Yeah, man. That's. And we can so, do it in front of a bunch of people, man, which can be tough, but fuck, fuck it, man. Fucking send it, fuck bro. It. If some girl can spread her cheeks online, who says we can't put this out? Hey, I see your asshole. Do. Just do porn. Just do it. Hey, it, you know what someone said? Hmm. Like, oh, she does OnlyFans. She's got a side hustle. No, you do porn. Hmm. You're you a prostitute. Porn. You do porn. Like, let, let's, let's not pretend... OnlyFans is not a side hustle. You do porn. <laughs> oh, hey, hey speaking of it, speaking of which, I have another project that I'm working on um, that I wanted to plug real quick. Uh, go ahead. So just like TikTok is getting banned, I heard that there's works of OnlyFans getting shut down also. So I'm so I'm partnering with some other people uh, to start a new website that's sort of close to OnlyFans. It's called MyDadLeftEarly.com. So um, <laughs> keep an ear out for that because it's going to be launching here pretty soon. So MyDadLeftEarly.com so all the OnlyFans girls can come there. <laughs> dude, dude. And, and hey, let me, let me walk this back and let me say this. Let me walk this back. Hey, women, you're liberated. You are. Show, your, show your show your puss. I support you. And, and someone asked me, like, what do you think of girls who walk around with their pussy out? Cool. I need that girl. Mm-hmm. We, we need that girl. Mm-hmm. She's doing the Lord's work. We need that girl. So so I support you. I be sexual. Be free. You're equal. You're, you're you deserve a happy, joyous, and free life. But let's not pretend what we're doing. This is what we're doing here. This is, what we're this, is doing. this is what we're doing. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. And it's Just okay. Do your thing. Just do your thing. Anyway, let's wrap it up. All right. Oh, plug your new plug your new YouTube channel. Yeah, right? Hey, so um, a YouTube channel is called Barrio Corner, right? Because we're doing it at Barrio Logan, and I want to show love to Barrio Logan. So it's called Barrio Corner. Uh, they're on YouTube. You can actually. You can go to the Big Mood TV, right? That's our landing page. And you can find Barrio Corner and all the other channels that we're working on there too, right? Scroll down to the bottom. Barrio Corner will be right there. On Instagram, you can find us at Barrio Corner, just like that, right? There's a few things. We're banking up some few stuff, right? We, uh, we're we launching the Jericho Black and K-Sounds. Sounds familiar duo here pretty soon within the next couple of weeks. Uh, we got some more people scheduled out, some really cool bands um, that I'm really excited to work with dude it's gonna be so cool and we're all we're doing it out of here room and board recordings man um so youtube barrio corner instagram at barrio corner find it there give it a follow give it a like give it whatever you want to do show some love and support man we got some awesome people coming on boom and if you're listening uh you can watch this podcast at big mood tv of course my instagram is eric underscore big mood coach and uh, the website is bigmoodcoach.com. Shout out to me for perfect branding. Shout out to me for brand <laughs> con- Shout out to me for brand continuity. I, and, uh, all that shit goes unnoticed. Yeah. But shout out to my brand continuity. And shout out, yeah. shout out, Grippy Socks. Can't forget to ever thank Grippy Socks for making this life possible. Yo, shout here. out to yo, yo, shout out to Cornerstone and fucking Queens <laughs> Village, dog. Shout out to Michael's house. Shout out to Four Winds Youth treatment center for this for the psychiatric <laughs> shout out shout out to my roommate who was a sick jew and he wouldn't take a shower for five days shout out shout out all right yo man thanks for having me on uh love you probably talk to you later today anyways uh and that's it right all right we out both you're circling above they all win a piece but they don't even know my name won't get even to swipe for the train 
Audi, ride to the airport, get to get right for the plane. Customs, not like whoosh. Wife in your hand in a tush. Yes, I ain't got no shame. Never. So we line to shine. With a broke if you got no game. Waking up next to the skates. Can't go home to the dame. Nah, tell them sell to the same. Really though, who can they blame? And I don't blame them either. They just wanna play the game and they're eager, eager still. I don't wanna know you. I'm busy. You don't even know thyself.